Welcome to week two of the accounting presentation. Um, uh, my name is Nigel, and um, the course this week is going to talk about account preparation um, and accounting controls. So uh, just a brief summary of what we discussed last week, uh, just to reiterate, um, the whole point of accounting is that we're making sense of chaos, um, uh, understanding about cash flows, um, and in particular, we're trying to find out how much money has a business or an organization made or lost in the, in the, in the accounting period, um, how much money can be drawn from the business, and how much money is going to be needed going forward to continue with the organization or to continue to trade. And there were two types of um, transactions that businesses need to know about. One is the cash movements during an accounting period. I'll just say that one more time. It's during an accounting period, because for accounts to make sense, you have to know over which period you're doing the accounting. And then we also want to know what are the assets and liabilities at a particular point in time. So when we're making sense, that's what we're making sense of. And in order for something to be useful, uh, we create accounting categories and those categories need to make sense for the organization so that you can understand what's happening in the organization and the categorization changes depending on what the organization is. So that was last week's um, course. The topics this week is about how we compile accounts, uh, how we manage errors and set up accounting controls to minimize errors, and something called an audit trail. Um, and an audit trail is something which has a much greater significance than it may seem, but it's all about how you track individual transactions once you have compiled everything together and it's how you get back to the original transaction and the documentation that relates to it. So, compiling accounts. There are two types of accounts that we prepare. Um, one of them is accounts um, for management. And the idea of management accounts is it's to take the accounting information that we've compiled and collated and present it in a format that the managers of an organization, a business or a charity, can understand how to change what they're doing in order to improve outcomes. So management accounts are very much for management or for anybody managing the business, but that's distinguished from statutory accounts and statutory accounts are accounts that are more aimed at people who are assessing a business from outside and typically the way capital the, the capital society works is we have a whole load of shareholders who are not involved in managing the business and what's important is that they are informed about how well or badly a business has done and how much assets or liabilities there are they, they have so that they can make sure that management are, are, manage, are, are uh, account, using their funds appropriately and that if they're making profits, um, they know how much the value of their business is likely to be. So they may want to sell their shares or to invest more money in the business. And the idea of statutory accounts is to create a standardized set of accounting so that investors and other people, for example, banks, can compare accounts from one business to another and know that they're consistent. We'll explain that in a bit more detail. But an example of statutory accounts, um, the two types of uh, accounts that we are uh, creating is one was the flow of funds during an accounting period. So in this case, the accounting period is for the year ended 31st of March 2021 of, in this case, Sunshine Traders. And in statutory accounts, you're required, for example, to say who the accounts uh, relate to, what the accounting period is, and you're even required to say profit and loss accounts if you're in the UK, other countries have different requirements, and you have to compare 
the current period with the previous period, it's a statutory requirement. You have to disclose income, talking about sales or turnover, different types of income. And the income itself is defined in, in law as to what you have to include. And the reason being that if I've got accounts for sunshine traders and I want to compare them with a set of somebody else's accounts, I want to know that I, that I have some level of consistency that when I'm looking at income and sales, I'm looking at the same thing between different companies or different organizations. So statutorily, there's a, in the UK, there's a certain set of accounts for small businesses. There's a certain format, which are much more complicated and, and uh, much more detailed for public companies. There's a separate set of accounts for charities. So in law, there's a, a, maybe half a dozen different types of accounts that you have to prepare. And the idea of them, as I said, is that they're, they're um, consistent from one company to another. So as I said, in a statutory account, you have income, cost of sales, which gives what's called a gross profit. We'll explain that a bit later. Various expenses, which gives you net profit um, of the period, uh, net profit before tax for the period. For the, in this case, it's for the year. Um, tells you what the taxation is, how much profit you made after tax. Again, this is statutory, a statutory requirement. How much dividends you paid and how much money is retained in the business after you've made your profits and after you've paid out the dividends. So that's the cash flow during the period. And the balance sheet, the assets and liabilities, liabilities at a particular point in time, in this case is as at the balance sheet date, which is the 31st of March, 2021. Just want to draw attention to the fact that in the profit statement, we had accounts for the year to the 31st of March, 2021. And we could have had a balance sheet for any period at all. We could have done the 31st of December, but we're required to have a consistent balance sheet date to coincide with the end of the accounting period that we've just done the accounts for. So it seems pretty obvious, but actually it's not quite so straightforward. And sometimes people you're explaining accounts to might not recognize that this. And an example of when this might happen, when they might not figure it out, is if you're explaining accounts to management, typically the profit and loss account, my experience is they'll understand what we mean about the accounting period. But what they're less likely to, recon to, to recognize is that the balance sheet may not be the balance sheet as at today's date. And typically, if there's a very large transaction that's changed, and the bank balance, for example, is very substantially different from it was at the balance sheet date at the 31st of March, maybe we're talking to them in the middle of April or, or middle of, of May, um, they may well forget that we're not talking about today. Um, so sometimes it's important, if you, particularly if you've got managers that are not that familiar with accounts, to just draw attention to them about what the accounting period is and the balance sheet date is, uh, particularly if a lot has changed between then and now, because as I said, in my experience, at some stage, a manager is going to misunderstand the figures and that could cause some problems at a later date. So when we compile accounts, um, we're looking at the management accounts and the statutory accounts. And uh, what I want to do now is to show you how to prepare accounts based on the spreadsheets that we prepared last, last week. Okay, so last week we talked about um, how we categorize expenses based on what the business needs are. And we picked a cleaning business. One of the people attending this course is running a business, uh, a cleaning business. So I thought we'd uh, use that, them as an example just to, to illustrate what we're, we're uh, this income and expenditure account. And uh, some of you will have done the exercises and created something similar to this. You might have come with slightly different income categories or expense categories. But in this particular example, um, we created income categories and expense categories. And um, the totals uh, are listed down here. The total of the income for the business was £2,100 of business income, £300 of residential income, and various expense, uh, expenses, materials, rent and rates, utilities, and travel. 
And although this is a small number of transactions, exactly the same principle applies even if you had 5,000 transactions, that you're putting them together in categories and getting an overall total. So if you've got just a very small number of transactions, um, sometimes this is actually enough to show as accounts to somebody. But typically, um, we need to create a more sophisticated um, layout to make it a bit easier. Um, the reason this is probably not a good layout is there's too much detail. And if you're showing management these figures, the chances are they'll probably home in on this and say, oh, that's spelt wrong, or that can't be right because. And if you're trying to explain to management about what the accounts show, you don't want them to get into that level of detail. So even in very simple um, uh, accounts, you normally want to have a, a format that's um, laid out slightly differently. And this is just a very good format to let to, to, to um, uh, as an example. And you'll notice there's three categories of um, profit and loss accounts. Again, I want to stress in this case, we're doing it for the month to February, 2021. So again, it's really important that you identify what the period is because again, management, if they're looking at the figures may well misunderstand if you're showing them figures for three months and they think it's a month or vice versa, you can actually have some, some misunderstandings going on. So it's really important when you're doing accounts, um, always to set out what it is that you're showing, what the accounting period covers and what period it ends to, just to avoid um, doubt. And as I said, if you start to feel you're talking across purposes with management or with anyone else looking at the accounts, you can very quickly draw them to draw their attention to the dates if necessary. But there's three separate categories we've got. One is an income category. One is what it's, what's called cost of sales. And one is administrative expenses. And I just want to talk very briefly about the difference between these three types of categories to try and give an understanding for what happens if you've got different types of businesses. So in a cleaning company, our income is pretty obvious and straightforward. It's business sales, residential sales and interest. So if we have any of that in this business, we, we have um, th that income, not really much to discuss about it. But if this was a charity, what would you show as a charity's income? Is a donation income? Or is a donation different from an income? If a charity, for example, has both donations, if, if you imagine Kew Gardens, Kew Gardens charges people to go in and look at the gardens. It also gets donations. So I think it's pretty obvious that the, the, the receipts for going into the Kew Gardens would be um, income. But what about its donations? Would donations be income? or would donations go in a separate area? So rhetorical question, because uh, it's a bit difficult to get interaction. Um, I can see a few of you are sort of answering the question, albeit on mute. That's great, I'm, I'm glad you're doing so. Um, typically with a charity, yes, donations are treated as income. And what I'm trying to distinguish with this is that income is not necessarily what you've earned. It's the money that's come into a business during an accounting period. Now, some charities may not want to show donations as income. They may, may want to distinguish the, if I call it the trading income from the donation income. So it'd be completely appropriate, for example, to add in a few extra columns. Um, and you might have, for example, donation income and trading income. You might have donations and legacy income. So you might want to distinguish this in a particular type of entity or a business. In a charity, you might want to do this, but we're dealing with a, um, a conventional business and the conventional business really just has income. That's pretty simple and straightforward. But what I wanted to show is that you've got a lot of flexibility to highlight things or to change the way layout is set out depending on what you think is important in the business. And when you're talking with management, if they start to talk and ask you questions to delve in, to, to drill down to a particular type of information, you may want to reconsider the layout and you've got the complete flexibility. And this is an example. The reason I'm doing this on a spreadsheet rather than a computer is it's easier to see this happening on a spreadsheet than in computer accounts. 
but exactly the same happens in computer accounts. So the trading income, I think, is fairly simple. A bit more complicated is cost of sales. So I want to look at three or four different types of businesses to illustrate the, the issues with cost of sales. In a um, cleaning business, um, the cost of sales are the materials you use when you go uh, to a premises and you clean. So for example, if you've got cleaning materials, detergents, um, you have to go and you take cloths, you use the cloths and you throw them away at the end of the, uh, at the, end of the period, particularly under COVID, you may not want to reuse uh, a lot of material. There's a lot of variable stuff. And the only time you spend money is if you're going to do, do a job that you're earning income for. So the idea of a cost of sale at one level is this is income, uh, this is expenses you've got that relate to particular jobs. So I know one of the people attending this course is, um, makes films. So with a filmmaker business, the income would be when you sell um, royalties, you sell films, you show films on Netflix, that would be the income. Your cost of sales would be what you pay out to make the film. And the idea is that there's a direct relationship between the cost of sales and the sales itself. So in a, I know a number of people here are involved in the property industry. So in the property industry, you'd probably have rental income as, the, um, um, uh, as your income. And a cost of sale might be utilities. In order to get rents, you may pay out some, you know, at the premises, you may have to pay some electricity costs and you may recharge your tenants. So you might have rental income here, recharged utilities here, and one of your cost of sales might be the utilities which you spent at that property for which you got rental income. So as I said, the idea of cost of sales is to get a, a direct link between what your income is and what your costs are for to get that income. And one of the reasons this is quite important, if for example, you're a professional business and you're selling people's time. So I was an accountant and we used to have income from the people, our professional staff would be charged at and we'd pay people um, who are going out and doing the work. And in a lot of industries, the relationship, the ratio between your costs and your sales are a very useful um, indicator as to how well your business is doing. So in an accounting practice 20 years ago, you used to try to get, a th um, if you spent £100 on paying staff, you try and get income of £300. There's a three to one ratio. If you have a restaurant business, your income would be um, uh, the re receipts for a restaurant, the cost of sales would be the cost of food. And typically in a restaurant, you want a two to one ratio. It could be three to one. Um, and there's a, a lot of sophisticated discussions that, that go on relating to that. But the what you're trying to identify is your direct costs of sales. And that's distinguished from the third category which are either called administrative expenses or sometimes they're called fixed expenses. And the general concept of administrative expenses is that you spend this money whether or not you have income. So for example, if you're paying rent, if you're a shop and you're paying rent, it doesn't matter if no one walks through the door or a million people walk through the door, your rent is fixed. So, um, if you're a restaurant, for example, you might be selling, um, getting receipts um, for uh, when people come in and buy food and your cost of sales are food, the food itself. But whether or not someone comes in, your rent goes into your fixed costs or your administrative costs. People use this, uh, different terms to mean the same. Uh, people use different terms for the same thing. So it's really just... Um, what you feel comfortable with and what your management feel comfortable with. 
And the reason why this is so important is that if you have fixed costs, you know you have to earn a certain amount of money just to break even. So I'm gonna put a few numbers in uh, and then we'll come back and discuss that very briefly. But um, uh, I'm now going to populate these accounting formats and the categories that I've used were the categories that we chose when we decided to categorize the accounting. So we've already been through that process. We then put them into the slightly re revised format. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the figures that are in my spreadsheet and put them into the management accounts. So what I could do is remember that this for business, total business income for February is 2,110 pounds. So I could type in here 2110, but I don't know if you're anything like me, the chances are you'll make a mistake when you do it. Um, what I'm going to do is create a formula that says put into this cell, whatever's in this cell here. And the way I do that is I type the equal symbol, which means I'm about to put a formula in, go to the categorized transaction, find the cell that I want to um, transfer the figure for, and it puts the figure in directly. Um, I'm not gonna talk about that, the mechanics of that, because I think most of you understand that, but there's a separate uh, video on how you use spreadsheets. So I'm just going to much more quickly now go through and do that with the rest of the figures. So materials, uh, travel, travel in is a different column, so I just need to be careful about that. Um, administrative expenses, um, uh, the rent and rates, um, utilities, and other. Okay, so we've now got this format that's I think quite easy for most people to understand. Most people, if you showed this, even if you didn't explain it, would get it. But I want to highlight that we've created these administrative costs or fixed costs. And in this particular example, um, uh, I just had a, an additional error. So I just fixed the additional error. I'll come back to that in a minute. Um, in this particular example, we've got 600 pounds of costs. And by and large, every month, we're gonna have something similar. Um, so the question is, do we have enough income from our normal trades to be able to cover that? So I'm gonna very slightly modify this spreadsheet. I'm going to create um, a, a subtotal to create something called gross profit. The gross profit is the difference between the income and the direct cost of sales. So the formula is simply add these all up together. I'm just gonna create a, a, a line above uh, the subtotal just so that you can tell it's a subtotal and then revise this formula. Right, so what I've done is I've created an interim line called gross profit. This is the, in the restaurant business, this would be the difference between my receipts in the restaurant and the food I've had to pay out. Or in the cleaning business, it's the difference between what I um, invoiced and the cost of my materials. Or in my rental business, this would be the difference between my rental income and what I had to pay out directly to keep that rental income going. So I might have paid management expenses, somebody to manage the property for me. Um, and the question is, how, are these gross profits more or less than your administrative costs? So from the management account point of view, we've now created a very simple um, format, which took the figures from our spreadsheet, from our categorized spreadsheet, and we've, put the, we've flowed them through to these accounts. Um, and um, so um, just to summarize where we've got in terms of the bookkeeping, we started off with these unprocessed transactions. We categorized them. 
into appropriate categories. We've put them into a format and we've now created our first set of accounts. So um, I'm afraid we've run out of time to do what I wanted to do. So I'm gonna to touch very briefly on a couple of points and I think we're gonna to have to deal with them um, next in next week's session. But one of the things that um, may well have happened is we've got profits and loss of 300 pounds here. Um, I can just tell you because I did this by intent. Um, one of these figures doesn't, one of these columns doesn't add up properly. So these accounts are gonna look correct, but they're wrong because one of the formula I've inserted is incorrect. So whereas accounts are relatively easy to prepare, and for the people that are new to this altogether, I hope you recognize that in two weeks, you've already learned how to prepare accounts. As a bookkeeper, almost as important as preparing accounts is understanding how to stop errors arising. Because the worst thing you can do in accounts, particularly accounts that look professional, and these will look pretty professional to anyone that you give them to, is to have figures in there that are incorrect. So in next week's um, uh, session, we're gonna talk about um, how you set up accounting controls, how you manage um, spreadsheets, uh, what sort of errors that can come in and how you prevent them. And one of the most important accounting controls really of any that you have anywhere, how you reconcile these figures here to a bank statement, because the most, the easiest error of all is if there's an entry on your bank statement that you've forgotten to transfer to these unprocessed transactions. There'll be an exercise, I'm gonna to have to slightly modify the exercises now, um, an exercise about preparing your own set of accounts. And I might give you a bit of an introduction to some error uh, accounting so that you're prepared for next week's um, figures, uh, next week, of course. Uh, thank you for joining me. Uh, just to remind everyone that these uh, courses are being uploaded to the Sunshine Courses uh, website, where they'll be available, as well as the uh, exercises as well as the presentation. Uh, I'm afraid you didn't see the beginning of the presentation, uh, but the presentation will be available for you to download. So thank you for joining me this week. And um, that's the end, we'll hopefully see you next week.